Welcome to the tutorial on Flutter desktop applications using 360 degree images. We're using the Panorama Viewer package on desktop and web with Zoom. On mobile, Pinch to Zoom is enabled by default. However, on the desktop, it's a bit more difficult. To an empty Flutter project, we'll first add the Panorama underscore Viewer package. Then we'll make a directory for the assets, and the assets will have images. It'll be an equi rectangular 360 degree image. This tutorial will work with either the Rico Theta images, any model, or any of the many available free 360 degree images online. As with any other image, we're going to have to add the assets directory in which the images are in into the pubspec.yaml file. So I have mine at assets slash images slash. For this demonstration, I'll be using an 11K image from a Rico Theta X, but you could use any type of 360 degree image for this tutorial. I'm going to use an interior of an automobile, which is used for used car sales. This gives the potential buyer of the used car a great way to interact with the interior of the car so they can see the steering well and how it looks when they're driving the vehicle. You can see that I just have a bare bones application here and we're gonna drop in the panorama viewer. I'm gonna do control dot or command dot on the Mac to do auto import of the panorama viewer package. The Panorama Viewer package takes a child, which is a standard image. So we're going to use image.asset since the asset of our, our image is stored locally on our computer at this time. You could also use image.network if the network is from a remote source. Include the relative path of the image. I have my image called theta underscore x underscore car dot jpeg they have the linter is detecting the error because there was a const in front of the material app by default and with this simple add we now have a 360 degree viewer i'm just going to get rid of the center to make the code more concise So we now have a excellent looking 11K image from the Rico Theta X. The Panorama Viewer does have a property for zoom. However, this is the initial zoom setting. And even if you change this setting while the application is running, the viewer doesn't actually rebuild. So this zoom, it's the initial zoom here. So after a hot restart, the zoom does take effect. However, even if you use a state management system, such as set state, it won't actually change the zoom while the viewer is operating. To do that, we're gonna to have to use the panorama state. I'm gonna isolate the panorama package um, into a separate widget so that we can focus on the Panorama Viewer. Now I have the Panorama Viewer widget within a stateless widget, but I've just converted it into a stateful widget. We're going to use a global key, and this is built into Flutter. And the global key will have a unique identifier for the instance of the widget. So this global key is from Flutter. And I'm going to assign it, I'm going to instantiate it. And 
and we're going to connect it to something from the Panorama Viewer package called Panorama State within the angle brackets. Now that we have our key set up, so you can check to make sure that it is from the Panorama package, Panorama State, we're going to apply the key to the Panorama Viewer. So we don't need this initial zoom since the initial zoom I'm just going to take as 1.0, which is the default. But the important part here is that we're going to attach the property key to a panorama viewer. And it's this new key that we created within the state. To interact with the viewer, we're going to create a plus and minus buttons to adjust the zoom. You can also use the mouse wheel. However, we'd have to create a listener to capture the mouse wheel, and we can take care of that in a separate video. Uh, this video just focuses on the how to adjust that property for the set zoom of the panorama viewer. So this stack is simply to add a button overlay as a row on the top of the Panorama Viewer. To create the button overlay, we're going to use the built-in flutter icon button. The dot filled tonal will create a background coloring uh, so that we can more easily see the top icon. And we're going to build use the material icon that is built into Flutter by default. We we'll use icons.add. You can see a list of these icons on the material icons if you search for it. We'll just run the application to make sure that the icon button is appearing. And there it is in the upper left hand corner. We're going to adjust the, the placement of the icon. So first we'll drop that into the center because it's all the way on the upper left hand corner. So we'll first put the icon in the center. And then we'll drop it down vertically with padding on the top part of the icon of the row. So there's itch insets dot only. And one of the properties is top, and we'll drop it down 30 pixels from the top. So it looks, starts to look a bit more normal of how you want the placement to be. If you actually are using this in production, you might want to put the icons at the bottom. However, since the tutorial focus is wholly on the zoom, we're leaving it at the top so that it catches people's attention first. But this is just for this tutorial. So there's a panel key, which we created. So we created this panel key. And there's a property for current state. So we're going to check to see if the panel key current state is null or not. And if it's not null, then we're going to check the current zoom first, because we're going to add the delta of some type of uh, double to the current zoom. So we'll first calculate the or pull out the current zoom from the current state and the current state has a scene. This is part of the panorama state uh, object. That exclamation point is just saying that it's not null. So we already are checking for null above it. And so we know that we can get the zoom. Now that we know the current zoom, we can now adjust the current zoom with the method set zoom. So if you recall, we've already gotten the current state uh, at this point in time. And so we're going to use the built in set zoom. This is part of the panorama state class. And we're going to adjust it with a double. So we'll take the current zoom and we'll add 0 0.3 to that. And the Test it out. Oh, it's working. 
very nice. You can see the fantastic resolution of the center console of the Ricoh Theta X 11K images. So the button for the reduction of the size or to zoom out will just copy the existing icon button and we will change the icon to the built-in material icon for remove and we'll also instead of adding the delta we're just using 0 0.3 you can adjust this to whatever you want we'll use subtraction and the name of the icon is remove okay everything's looking fantastic in production, you might also want to add the scroll wheel for desktop and web. It's not covered in this video. You would need to use a listener to check the delta of the scroll. However, just the buttons would be a reasonable interface. Maybe possibly make it a little smaller and drop it down to the bottle, bottom of the, the stack here. Okay, the buttons are just a little close together, so we're going to finish this tutorial with just putting some additional spacing between the buttons. I'm going to work on a, another video on the scroll wheel values and how to extract those because it's generally applicable to any type of Flutter web or desktop application. In the description of the video, put a link to the code also put a link to how to get some free 360 degree images. In the future, if there's interest, we can create some videos on using things like hotspot or linking from one 360 image to another or linking from a 360 image to like a, a pop out or a more information on, for example, the media console and things like that. We could also dig into the metadata of 360 images if there's interest in that. So we just wrap some padding horizontal around the two buttons and they look a little bit better. For production, might want to drop it down to the bottom. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.